Okay, so. Let's see where we left off. Because we left off in Bree... No, we left off in the Shire. Where the hell this is this? Okay, wait a minute. Let me get back into the screen. We are... in Little Delving. And we need to go down here. So, a place that I can't see. Oh! Okay. So I can actually move this around. That's nice. Okay. So that's questing. I am not even going to mess with you. So exciting to see a true hero of the Shire. Hello. Mundo will never admit to it what you did, but that talent folk will be talked about behind your back for years. Admit to it, but what you did with the tall folk will be talked about behind your back for years to think you helped save not only two hobbits from the Shire, but a whole town. Marry me, you must have little, a little baggins in you. Cool. Token of salutation. Can be exchanged at Salonium and Thorn Halls, Archit, or Little Delving. Order items. Need? Well, guess I'm buying one of those because that seems super. In that seems super nifty. Might I have a word with you? Would you perhaps go to Michael Delving? Okay, so this is... Collect the satchel from Postman Nubuck's Tale. I should probably be reading this, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to be reading that today. I'm very sorry. <clears throat> so that's crafting. Not even going to mess with that. Oh, I never actually looked at any of this stuff. Okay. Critical hits with your response skills heal you for a percentage of your max morale. <coughs> Excuse me. One percent skill damage. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm probably going to- why can't I? Hello? I don't have points of- The hell? Grace has its own unique set of traits that can be earned by completing specific deeds. Once earned, you can equip a trait by grabbing it. Skill slots. One thousand virtue XP. Okay. This is a lot more in-depth than I was originally expecting it to be. Okay, that's pretty cool. So either way, I want to go to... Mundo McDoodly-Doos, join the Bounders. Bundle from Michael Delving. Post Nubex, oh, duh, this thing. Got it, okay. I'm going to pick up the table, or excuse me, pick up the satchel. Avoid nosy hobbits. Okay. So we're going to go... Townsperson. Oh, I'm actually carrying the bag. Okay. <clears throat> So when they're saying avoid the nosy hobbits, they they literally mean a avoid them. Because you're holding this... Okay. Alright. It's basically an escort quest. Okay. I understand. I understand what's happening now. Alright. That's fa Oh my god. Seriously. Like... Is there something in the air? What the hell, man? Maybe it's just new shampoo I'm using or something, but... Dude. Ah, uh, <clears throat> I don't remember, like, this being an issue. Okay, so let's try this one more time. Might I have a word with you? Uh-huh. We're gonna take the thingy. 
We are going to bug out, apparently, for a second or two. <clears throat> and we're going to go to Michael Delving's place while avoiding hobbits because they're going to get in my way. Is it... Did you just see a giant flashing ring in front of me or something, or am I just going crazy? Oh, it's timed. It is a time... Oh, no. Of course it's a timed quest. Why wouldn't it be? Also, this is kind of weird. I'm sort of ice skating back and forth here. <clears throat> it's a little... The movement is, like I said, feels a little bit floaty. I'm not really sure how to explain it. It's not bad. It's just a little bit different. Uh, this is kind of... I don't know if this is intended, though. This seems like it might be a little bit of a problem. Founder. I don't know what purple means, but I'm assuming it's probably not fan... Oh, Jesus. Not fantastic. Hold up. <clears throat> All right, from for Minecraft trees. This is so chill, though. Michelle Delving. Oh, it's Mich Michael? Michelle? Mitchell? So where... The butts? Is this where I need to go for Michael Delving? <clears throat> Hold up. Let me just make sure it's it's not gonna show it's still gonna show all four in minimap. Of course it is. Okay, so what do we got here? <clears throat> so Roland Newbuck. I'm too busy to do that, so I actually have to finish something something proudfoot. Postmaster Proudfoot, there you are. Could I take a moment of your time? <clears throat> Yay! New deed. Restoring the quick post. What am I doing now? Wait, what? What did I just do? Uh Way feet. Way meat. Where the hell is way meat? Okay, it's okay. So hold up. Hold up. Hold up. We gotta decline. Okay, we need to get rid of the satchel. Or, you know, I guess I'm just- I'm just stuck now. Alright. I guess I'm just holding the satchel forever. That's not true. I'm sure I could get rid of the satchel by jumping into water or something, but quite frankly, no. You were spotted by a nosy hobbit. <clears throat> Here, postman, hold a minute. I'm waiting to see if you have it. Oh, I get okay, I get why it's kind of a big deal. Okay, so I've learned that milestone, I think. So either way, we're not doing that quest right now, from what it looks like. Okay, so screw you, Mr. Postman. Good day. A letter from Sackville Baggins is not something you want to see. He's holding me personally accountable for his troubles in Breedland? I wasn't even there. I'd never even been outside the Shire. Now I'm supposed to pay just compensation to his family? But he took no harm and was an archer of his own accord. You don't happen to know why I wanted to be mayor, do you? Because I seem to have forgotten. <laughs> I like that. I, I, I feel that. I definitely know that. That feeling right there. Stay and have some tea. See your deed log for more information. You can access your deed log by accessing the start menu location in the lower left bottom hand corner of the something 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 doopy doopy. 
You can now gain a hobby. Open your hobby panel via the start menu under character. View the hobby panel where you learn hobby masters are located. You will learn, you will want to visit a hobby master if you wish to learn more about hobbies or participate in a hobby. Jesus Christ, you have earned your first trait point. Character in the trait tree panel. Oh my god. Look at basic steed. See the horse master? Buy your starter horse pony. After you purchase a mount, you may want to map the action to a summoning key. The keyboard shortcut, okay. Yeah, I know about the map. That's probably something you should have mentioned at level 1, not level 7. What about Manu's demand that I pay compensation for his ill treatment of Breland Solidara, and I'm not going to do it. We simply can't afford to pay money to satisfy a single hobbit for an experience that was his own fault to begin with. The Sackville Bagginses have never liked me either. I think it was one of them that started calling me flower dumpling after the roof... The town hall gave way and buried me in shock, you know. I don't mind when the sheriffs, the sheriffs call me that. When the sacral baggage is just too much. Oh Christ! Okay, so I'm going to be in the middle of one of these things, huh? Shrew. Housing storage allows you to share your money with who's of access. That is definitely not something I need to know about just yet. Hello. Hmm. They were sent my way, were you? Well, I'm glad to have helped you out. Well met, my friend. Well hired. Help out as many shire folk as you can and you'll rise to the ranks. Our cares may seem small small importance to others. Delivery of the mail, the tasting of fine foods, the lighting of fireworks. But you and I know they are worth protecting. These peaceful ways are threatened and danger can be found even throughout the shire. Aid our people with their daily concerns? But if you travel to more distant villages, such as Needle Hole, Overhill, or Brocken Borings, bring a weapon with you. Life is dangerous on the borders of the Shire. And the further you get from Michael Delving, Michel, Michel Delving, and Hobbinton, the more likely you are to see combat. Okie dokie, then. Oh, goodness. Could you help me with something? He lives up in Needle Hole, far to the north. Please make sure he's alright, and return with the missing money. So, we got a Where's the Money Lebowski quest, okay. Stay. What do you got? Stay. Hello there, you wouldn't mind helping me out with a game of Hiders and Seekers, would you? You see, my friends Daisy and Polo have convinced me to play even though they were always hiding in the same places. It isn't nearly as much fun when your friends are so unimaginative as I'm sure you, real you realize. It would be fa fantastic if you could round them up for me. I'll give you a coin or two if you help me out, but I don't know how many more times I can pretend to be surprised. The bushes next to Peony's Grub's home, where Pop is crouched behind the carved statue of Marco and Blanco. In other words, he's sending other people to be like, "Look, can you just find them for me? Because I'm, I'm not, I'm not about it right now." I mean, that's fair, though. I'm just wondering why he doesn't say, "Hey, why not just try to find a different friggin' place to go, man?" Shouldn't be that hard. Hello. Hello, Mr. Hobby Master. Have you always wanted to relax by a stream or pond, cast your line to the sparkling waters, and catch a fantastic flounder or a perfect pike? With the fishing hobby, you can now just can. Healer. Arbor. Hello there. Oh, cool. Oh, this one is pretty. I like the way she is. I like her just the way she is. Hey, buddy. Good day. The bird and the baby. With you. Hello there. Have you seen? You haven't seen? You sit down, take a mug. Best you ever had? No. Oh well. You see, I've been entering the all farthing, the all farthing brewing mood every year, like clockwork for now. I'm fifty years now. Not one of my, not one prize to my name. This time, I think I got a smell of best in show. See, I just heard that my old great granddad. A took he was, who ran the bird and the baby in his day, won the moot prize almost every year he entered. And you say his brown was the best ever, but it seems the recipe died with him because the bird just hasn't been the same to compete since those days. Okay, so I gotta find his recipe. I'm starting to see why people were calling this potentially boring. This is a surprisingly big 
place for that tiny ass little thing. But maybe, oh wait, was it built into the wall? Isn't that the thing with the hobbits is that their stuff is all built in the walls and stuff, built in the mountains and whatnot? I guess that's more of a dwarf thing, but you know what I mean. Let's see, look how teeny tiny that is. Oh, I guess it is kind of built into a wall. Okay, that's fair. What is that up here? Really, I just want to go running around exploring, I'm going to be honest with you. I got a temporary horse, I'm sure I could go anywhere with it. And get killed a bunch, to be sure. But that's half the fun. What? Hello, Keeper Bromtard Foxtail. Okay. Might I have a word with you? Received word that Eladard took. That's a copy of the original writ penned by the old king. This writ granted from fellow Hyde brothers, Marco and Blanco. The lands that became the Shire. It is a most exceptional find. True, I already have a copy of the document, but it's in very poor shape. This copy is in better condition. It would be a marvelous addition to the Matham house. Would you go to Tookland and speak to Eladard? Adelard? Sure. Needlehole, Hobbitum, Woodhill, Stable Masters. Scary Quarry. Okie dokie. Hey, I didn't get fall damage. Yay. Okay, so what the hell am I doing? I'm doing stuff over here, apparently. I don't remember for what. This seems very, um... Good lord, okay. Taking a second for things to respond, okay. Founder's token collector. What quest is this? So there's that. The bird and the baby are both those. Oh, hiders and seekers, got it, okay. But they're hiding by the bush or some such. Probably should have paid attention to what they were saying and where the people were hiding. Oh, there he is. Hey, dude. Good day. Well, listen, you find me, didn't he? It always takes him so long to find us. Just between you and me, I don't think he's very good at hiders and seekers. I'll stay here and think about where I can hide from my next game. Yeah, you you do that, buddy. I don't think it's that he wants to take so long to find you. It's just that he kind of prefers when you're not there. Maybe I don't know. I wouldn't feel particularly pleased by my friends taking so long to find me because they're just like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm better off. Thanks. Hey, Daisy. How do you do? Oh, he always gives up so easily. I'm not sure that you can do this. Do that in a game of hiders and seekers. I'm pretty sure it's against the rules. If you don't find the hiders yourself, you aren't much of a seeker, are you? A great hiding spot, isn't it? I mean, if you say so. Of your time. I've received a most distressing letter. My good friend Dora, she's a chicken farmer near Way Waymeet, has written to say that a pack of wolves has invaded the Shire and driven her from her farm. She's staying in Waymeet for the time being. Okay, so wolves in the Shire. Don't you walk off? Oh, I need to speak with you. Okie dokie. My brother in Brockenborn is a bounder, so ordinary to ask him for help. Such a long way. There's a terrible infestation of shrews to the east of here. Beyond the delving fields, and they're burrowing deep into the soil and ruining the greenery. If you can find some of their burrows and close them up, that should keep the filthy little beast from staying near to the town. It's your duty to help me, Border. Okay. I mean, you're not wrong. But also, like... Nur. So there. What is this? That will parry- that will open a parry response. Is that so? Well, in that case... Or...
Retaliation. Oh, I already have that. Duh. Retaliation, and then force for retaliation is going to be right there. Force opening. So hold up. What did I just move? That's a dot. This will force an opening. Not the most accurate button ever. Okay. Strengthens defense briefly. Let's do that. This is so chill, man. I really can't stress that this is just... Oh, wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. That is a good long draw distance right there. Can I... I can't do that. Okay. Now, that's a good long draw distance right there. Wait, can I go to all of those places? Oh, wow. I totally can, can't I? Like, that's over... Wow. Okay, that's a... Okay, that's a big zone. This is a big honking zone. All right. So, I need to... Close. Close Shrewborough's. Shrewborough! Hey! Whoops. I just broke a leg. Whoops. <laughs> My bad. Hey, Shrews, how's it going? I was honestly expecting them to attack me. Oh, there they are. That's what I thought. Two. New deed, reactive block. Okie dokie. I literally don't know what I did. But okay. Shrubo. Hey guys. It's just gonna boop you real quick. Okay, that's definitely not. We gotta we gotta swap that. Requires the use of retaliation. Ow. Oh. Well shaz muffins. Okay. Shield swipe. And forceful retaliation is gonna be right there. Where's Shrewborough? Right, so there's I'm gonna start with my tainted shrew. Thieving shrew, whatever you're called. I still need another one? Oh, okay. Apparently I can't count. I thought I had four. Okay, that's fair. So, I actually would want to get the thing for Waymeat then, I imagine. Because that will take me to Waymeat, I will finish a quest there, which will then allow me to do whatever quests I need to do in this general area, I think. I can't really tell, I've never done any of this before. Is it Michelle? I don't know how to pronounce this, I, I want to say it's Michael. Or Mitchell. I guess it's Mich Michelle? I, I don't know. So. Somehow I didn't have a broken leg from that? You know what? Not even going to question it. Lots of purple names? Cool. I'm not really doing a whole lot of justice in terms of playing this. How do you do? 
Hiders and seekers is not much fun when your friends always hide in the same places. I don't think the game they're very good at. Hey, wait a minute. Did you say that Daisy mentioned hiding until I found everyone else? It's strange. I thought Polo was the only other hobbit I was supposed to be looking for. I meant you getting Odo to play, but I didn't think he'd actually do it. Here are the coins I promised you, but I thought it sounds like your work at Seeker might not be done yet. Wait, what? Could I take a moment of your time? I mean, do I have a choice? This is serious. I thought I was only playing Hider and Seekers with Polo and Daisy, but it sounds like they talked Odo Pipers into convincing to play as well. You'd think they might have mentioned that to me. At any rate, Odo has a reputation for being the best hider of all the Shire. At least as good as old Bilbo was in his day. Or so it said among folk of the third bird and the baby. I don't know if it's true, but I do know that unlike Daisy and Polo, Odo Pipes is sure have the capital hiding place of the very best. I'll have more coins for you if you can find them, Soladara. Or Solo Larda. Oh, Solo Larda. Okay. I'll be hiding somewhere in Michael Delving, so don't wander too far. You might want to talk to Polo and Daisy again. They might be able to tell you where you could be hiding. Okie dokie. Find Ido, Ido Odo Pipes. Yeah, this seems seems legit. Okay. I went from not facing Dark Riders, but running frantically from Dark Riders to uh, helping somebody cheat their way through a game of hide and seek. I mean, that sounds, I mean, seems legit, I guess. So, Ruby Primstone. It's been a foul day, it has. Uh, yes, indeed, it has been a very foul day and all that stuff. So, we're gonna take that so I can sell it. And of course, it's not showing, okay. So... Hello there. Doesn't surprise me, he's always been the best hider in the Shire. I don't know where his favorite building places are, though. He really likes to climb things. Trees, fences, buildings. If you're looking for Odo, you should probably be looking in the sky. Did I just... wall climb that shit? I don't know what- I don't know what I just did, but it definitely looked very strange out of the corner of my eye. What? What? I don't even remember where the other kid was, to be honest with you, so I guess I'm probably not going to be looking for him. Hey, Bounder. Hey, random Bounder guy, how's it going? He was over here, right? Polo, yeah. I'm amazed that I actually remember that. I don't think I did. I don't, but I do know they worked for a while slacking, stacking barrels of the burden baby just to the north. Maybe he mentioned his favorite hiding place to someone in there. Oh, God. Oh, I don't even know where the bird and the baby is. I've been there, but I don't remember where that shit is. Michael Delving Vendor Hall. The bird and the baby. It was in a tournament years ago. I'm the older one. At least the music's really happy. That's always a plus. Polo. I should be saying more, but I'm actually really just kind of vibing to the theme, you know what I mean? In the ah, there you are, you sneaky little bastard. Okay. Thought you could hide from me, fool? Well, you were right. You would absolutely would have if I hadn't actually read the quest text. And if I didn't buy the rule set of the game for once, instead of just like, eh, the game will tell me what I want to do. It's fine. A lovely day, isn't it? You found me. Very well done. Very well done indeed. Next time I'll need to choose a better hiding place, I suppose. I thought this one was perfect. You should return to Rolo and tell him that he knows how to choose good seekers. I mean, your friends kind of narked on you, so... Whoops. Oh, God. That walk animation is so jank. It's amazing. Hey, Rolo. Give me shit, please. How do you do? He was on top of the bird and the baby the whole time? He must have some Tukish blood in him. You'd never get me up there, I can tell you that. Here are the coins I promised you. 
And my thanks as well. If they ever get me to play hiders and seekers again, I'll be sure to let you know. That way you can give me a stern talking to and ask me what I was thinking. I mean, that's fair. Because I'm trying to figure that out myself, to be honest with you. Which sells for more? That one. Okay. Going by the old tried and true method of what gives me more. Might I have a word with you? Yep. I'm going to get a bundle. Walking the wrong way. So avoid the nosy peoples. It's gonna go this way. Who the hell? Oh, okay. I thought that was somebody that I was. I thought that was an NPC, and I'm like, wow, that NPC is like just going. All right. Like they have some really interesting pathing. And I'm kind of tempted to just follow this person because they clearly know what the hell is going on. And actually, this is kind of an ingenious way to be able to travel from one town to another with a speed boost. Especially before you have a chance to get a mount. Or at least that's, I'm assuming, one of the reasons is. I forgot to grab the bundle. That's fine. It's fine. I pay attention to things, I promise. Okay. Hungry Hobbit, that's basically all of them, yeah? I mean, and I'm not even saying that to somehow feel... like I'm being somehow racist. I mean, that's a that's trait known for Hobbits in the story, right? That they're just constantly hungry. They're just these unending pits of ravening or whatever. Hey, Mr. Postmaster. Um. Where the hell is it? <laughs> I think it's over this way? Postmaster, hey, how's it going? Okay. Uh. Okay. There we go. This is smarter. Actually having the quest item I need to complete the quest. I would have been so mad if I had gotten all the way there and then realized that I hadn't actually grabbed the freaking quest item I needed. And then I... Oh, you freaking... Where? Where was I spotted? Really? Really? Okay. This quest is going to be the bane of my existence, isn't it? It's fair. Very fair. All right. I mean, I talk smack the entire time. It would only make sense that I would basically immediately meet my maker to what is essentially the simplest quest in the history of mankind. Okay, so let's try this again. Might I speak with you a moment? I don't know. Might you? Might me, oh mighty miter? Okay. So when they mean avoid nosy hobbits, they, they mean, like, don't even get in their line of sight. You gotta stay, like, 50 yards away from these fools. Because that is some bullshnikes. Just, like, hide in bushes like I'm freaking Wiley Coyote. Still can't be normal. That can't be a normal animation, right? Am I even safe walking on the road like this? Wow, that's a long draw distance. Okay, I can see why they say ultra high. Wow, that's far away. Okay. It makes me want to go there. 100% want to go to wherever that is. Nosy Hobbit? Nosy Hobbit can F right off. You can absolutely F off with that. I don't care if I break a leg. I am getting this quest completed. Postman two foot. Yay! Please stay a moment. Indeed. Yay! Yay! It's the little things in life. I only managed to complete it while losing it once. Or twice. Always eating, drinking, and smoking weed. Yeah, you know, I mean, that sounds... 
I mean, I'm gonna be honest, it sounds like a very envious life to live, you know what I'm saying? Like, definitely sounds like something, the type of life where you can live a very quiet, relaxing life, you know what I'm saying? The life of man is really stressful. To just eat, drink, and be merry? Hell yeah. Campfire's out the wazoo. Who am I talking to here? Talk to Dora Browick. Oh, I walked right past you, lady. Hey, Dora. How's it going? How you doing? It's terrible. Andy sent me to help you? She's a sweet lady and a good friend. I'm glad to have your help. Yes, the wolves came slaving near Waymeat recently and seemed to head straight to my farm. It was all I could do to escape Waymeat without them noticing me. I hope it's not a bother, but may I speak with you? I'm guessing this is closer to what the uh, original animations look like, because that seems significantly lower quality than my gorgeous hobbit face right here. When wolves chased me off of my farm, I didn't have enough time to collect my babies. My poor darlings. What was that? My chickens, of course. If those wolves have gotten hold of them, I just don't know what I'll do. You can save them for me. I know you can. Follow the road up north, Hell, and take the first stone path to your right. You'll see a sign from my farm at the correct crossing. You must save my little darlings. Okay, well. I mean, alright. I'm down. How do you access deeds? Deeds. No. Social panel. Don't care. Wait, I have both of these for- oh, one's mounts, the other one's skills. Got it. Okay, so... Floaty names are now off. I love the fact that it's called a floaty name. That will never make me not smile. Because honestly, it just sounds perfect for the dude that is cool. Can I visit all of those places? Is that all in the same zone? Okay, I think I may actually have to turn this down to very high, which sucks. Oh, wait. Uh oh. What is frill distance? Better performance. Left gold ring icon. Ow. Oh, left of the gold ring icon. Okay. Deed log. Okay. Deed log. Start eight. Something, something, something. Okay. Strike enemies with a guardian's ward. Have I not done that? Two out of what? Does that say 1200? One out of 400. Okay, so I'm guessing these are long-term things, then. Okay. Skirmish, Gondor, Mordor, Hobbies, Instances, Skirmishes, Radior, Lore, Reputation, Slayer. I have nothing on that so far, so okay. Personal accomplishments. Oh, okay. Deeds. Okay, so they're basically achievements. Okay. Okay, that makes more sense. Because I was like, what the hell kind of a quest requires you to do this 1,400 times? Okay, that makes more sense. So I was like, wow, the grind is real. Okay.
How bad is this going to chug if I just turn everything to ultra high? If I turn everything to max settings? I'm curious. Inquiring minds have got to know. Ultra high. Very high. High. Ultra high. Because it's hilarious and I'm going to probably break my computer doing this. Yep. Okay. That's good. Wait, enabling this option may eliminate horizontal tearing. I don't see a difference. It looks, I mean, I, it honestly, it looks prettier. But in terms of quality, I don't really see a difference. Hold up. Um. Sure? Overlight bloom filter. I mean, I literally just turned everything up to absolute max details. You slightly increase your maximum possible frame rate in full screen mode, but uses more video intensive resources. Sweet baby Jeebus. It looks gorgeous, though. Now to complete three, you get a... Trait tree point. So basically, you want to complete achievements to get the uh, to get more trait points. Then okay, all right. So it, there's there is character progression to it then, and also I guess the uh, the lotro points, which I am to be if I am to understand is basically your bread and butter if you want to do anything in the game without having to shell out a bunch of money. I mean I know that VIP is apparently the the way to go, but etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, deed. I just got deed for her farm. Collect Doris chickens. Here, chicken, 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 chicken. Hey, there's a chicken. Oh. I kind of forgot that was a thing. Deed bestowed. Okay. Wait, access only to mails. Oh, mobile mailbox. Deed completed, a most curious hobbit. Okie dokie, get more trait slots. Not really now? I don't, I don't have that, so that's not happening. All right. Hey, chicken. Don't worry, chicken. I will save you from the angry, scary wolf. It will be amazing. Fear not, chicken. Chicken! Truthfully, it's one of the only things I can actually remember about Ed, Ed, and Eddie. It was a funny show. It was very slapstick comedy, and I can appreciate that. Yep. Pick up the chicken? No? Oh, it specifically has to be Dora's chicken. I mean, alright. I didn't know there was really a difference between wild chickens, and good lord, that is gorgeous looking. That is friggin' gorgeous. 
that I wouldn't be doing anything, it's going to be I oh, squeeze me, good sir. You will know suffering, good doggo. This was not your place. Hey, chicken, chicken, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm here to rescue you for reasons. Deeds. Yeah. So is that it? Just back to we meet I go, huh? What about Plank? No, Plank was good. Plank was, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of really good things about Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Uh, it was a fantastic cartoon. A lot of slapstick comedy. Eddie kind of made me want to punch a wall, but... You know, I mean, he was kind of the foil. He was the reason a lot of it happened. I'm not necessarily sure I was Double D specifically, but out of the three, I was most likely Double D. Ed, Big Ed... As adorable as he is dumb. God love him. He probably got dropped on the head a few times and then ate some paint, paint chips growing up. It's, it happens. It happens. I'm sorry. My, my thoughts were elsewhere. My precious George and my lovely Dottie. Someone needs to do something about those workers, those wolves, and that someone has to be you. I okay. Not a bother, but may I speak with you? The collections UI. Okay. You know, I'm not even going to open up those screens because I know it's going to show something is going to pop up. And I'm going to get confused and shut it, and then I'm going to try to figure out how to use it later, and then we'll probably forget. I don't know if I can go home until I know if those wolves are going for good. Really? Okay. I guess I'm going back over there and... Mer okay, that's fine. Postman two feet, I will be happy to help you eventually... But that day is not this day. Because I gotta go kill some wolves. Yep. I'm gonna be honest, the only thing that I think would probably make this more enjoyable, at least for me personally, is the ability to actually play with the controller. So I can kind of sit back and relax and just chill and really let myself kind of get sucked in. Because this is gorgeous looking. I mean, it's not the most highly high poly texture, whatever, ever. But I mean, like, that's gorgeous looking. Look at that. I mean, granted, this is at maxed out settings. So I don't know if that means anything relative to it being put on low. But this game is beautiful. Like I said, there's just something very immersive and chill and quiet about it. Which is odd, because typically something like this, it's like, well, every MMO has a... Oh, okay. You want to start with something with me, good sir? Good luck, my dude. Hey, 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 hey. I guess word has gotten around. My reputation has gotten the best of me or something. These wolves are all about it. Sucks to be them, because they gon' die. Did you just evade my sword? How dare you? Oh, lord. I guess one pain point about them, the uh, zones being so big is that not everything is loaded at once, so as soon as they get close, everything is loading in, so... It might be causing a bit of an issue. Wolf leader! You know, most wolf packs would not have this many leaders. That's why the phrase alpha exists. You. I'm gonna five you. And then pop a six. And then pop another two. My health is actually starting to drop, and that's a little bit frightening. I mean, not by much. It's not enough for me to genuinely fear for my existence, but... But it's good to know that there's actually, you know, a significant chance of death 
in some fashion or another. Defeat wolves at the wolves' den. Snarling wolf. I still don't really know what the hell buttons I'm pressing, so that's probably not a rousing endorsement of my skill. In Tuckerberg, there's a hill you can stand on to see nearly all of the Shire. Really? That sounds interesting. I hope I'll remember. I doubt it, but I hope I do, because that sounds pretty cool. I'm digging this music, though. So, this is going to sound really random, but there was a show that uh, existed, I suppose, in the mid-90s called Due South. It was basically this show about a Mountie uh, that was in Chicago for reasons that was not going to go in, that I'm not going to get into. It's kind of a long story. But he was basically stationed at the Canadian consulate in Chicago and hijinks ensued, body cop, yada, 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 yada. But the cool thing is that the games, or the games, the show's music, in terms of just regular music and in, like, their more combat -y scenes, was very similar to this. It was all done with piano and guitar. Like, the entire thing, unless they had, you know, soundtrack from something else, but their music was all pianos and guitars. So whenever I hear acoustic guitar in a battle scene, it immediately makes me think of Due South. Which is a good thing, because I loved that game. It was awesome. East of Tuckboro. I can hear you biting me. And that is a mistake that you will... Well, I guess you're not going to live to regret it because you will be soon dead. But that's neither here nor there, I suppose. At least for me, anyway. Thank you, sir. Wait, why am I running this way? I need to go back south. Excuse me, Mr. Wolfman. And again, major props to the skybox here. Like, this is... F like, look at that! It's so cool! Like, look at that. Like, that is amazing! Cutscenes ahoy! You can't stop me! I'm the gingerbread man, etc, etc. Ba 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 da boo. Um. Hobbiton Bywater. Okay, sure. Oh, I guess I'm on the outskirts of Hobbiton. Okay, cool. Yoink! Yoop! Damn it, now I just want to explore all of the zones. The 90s was a long time ago. Well, the thing is, I don't typically remember 90s music. It wasn't, um... But it was just a show I remember watching as I was growing up, and I just remember... And it just... I don't know if, Words. I don't know if it necessarily had a big impact on me, but it's just any time I hear acoustic guitar and anything resembling, like, a fight scene, I immediately think of that show. Like, it's just ingrained into my mind at this point that it immediately makes me think of that. And it's awesome because, I mean, acoustic guitar in battle music is actually not really done all that often. I think it's super underrated. You... So, I guess it's getting dark out. So, is this, like... Filter? Oh, is that actually, like, the day-night cycle right there? 3% maximum morale. Oh, hey, Dora. Sorry about that. You didn't see their leader at the wolf den? I literally fought like six of them. What are you talking about? Might I trouble you for some help? There's a room of a scarred old wolf spotted away from the rest of the pack. Across the road from the wolf den north of my farm. Why did you make a... I mean, a build the place in the middle of a wolf den, but also like... If he's literally across the road from where you live, then... I don't know, maybe should have saw some of this coming, ever? I don't know, man. My neighbor, Jolly Smallborough, is a true gentle hobbit. I suspect he's had something of an admirer of mine. Oh, good lord almighty. Okay. I will say, though, this particular quest design is, is old school. 
in the unpleasant way, where it's, it's do one quest, run back, complete it. Do one quest, run back, complete it. Do one quest, run back, complete it, get another one. And I'm just like, okay, well, you know, could we expedite this a little bit maybe? So I'm not running to the same exact same place or very close to the exact same place four times. Or at the bare minimum, at least give me like more than one quest to do. So if I'm going back, at least I'm, I'm doing more than a single solitary quest at the time. You know, if it was do one quest, pick up eight items, go back, do one quest, and then kill four other things while I'm there, do one quest, and then pick up an item, or something that makes it feel a little less like I'm quite literally just running from one spot to another constantly. That would be fantastic. I don't mind the necessarily run back and forth, but literally for one quest just feels not fantastic, gonna be honest with you. The last time I remember feeling it this much was actually, uh, playing in Rift, and that was years ago. I remember trying to do a Defiant storyline, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I've gone to this cave six times. And literally, you were going to the same cave to fight six different packs of monsters, and I'm just like, why didn't you... Why not just give these... Why not just have it just make me kill two of... Three of this monster, and then three of that monster in the same quest? Why did I come back to this cave actually six times? Hello. Truly? Perhaps she does have feelings for me. Well, to tell you the truth, I was a little worried myself when I once happened the wolf showed its muzzle around here. I felt sure my bucket of boar meat would lure the beast out of hiding. Oh, well. Wait a minute. Was he trying to lure... Was this fool trying to lure out a wolf so that way he could show his, his smitten love just how much of a badass he was? Wolf showed up. I felt sure my bucket of board meat would sure lure the beast out of hiding. Okay. Gracious me, what do I do with it? So, Mr- oh shit, Mr. Giant Wolfman. And there he is. And there's un- Let me murder him, please, thank you. Yep, this is what happens. When you think with your Bilbo and not with your brain, you know what I'm saying? Damn fool. He was just trying to be a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Thank you, friend. Yep, I knew it. God damn it. Boys. Boys are dumb. Oh, this is pretty. Like, the skybox, though, man. I really can't get over just how good the skybox looks. Holy shit. At this point, I don't even care if I get attacked. I just want to take cool pictures. Like, this is so cool looking. Maybe I'm just a sucker for skyboxes. I don't know. But this is, like, the shit that I love doing, man. Yep. Up. Oh. Did I freeze? Nope. Okay. There's no moon out. Okay. Don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Oh, never mind. There's the moon. I knew that. Look at this, though. I'm totally a tourist. I don't even care. Yes, I am on U.S. servers. I don't know which one it is. It's whatever the first one is listed there. It's not Brandywine. It's whatever the crap it actually is. All right. Okay, Dora. So your bow decided to nearly get us both killed. I'm sure you'll make wonderful babies or something. Terrible, just terrible. Pick him up on the dinner invitation. Yes, he ran straight here to, to ask before you even returned. I mean, that's... Sounds about right. 240 armor, yes, please. Or excuse me, 270 armor, yes, please. Arkenstone, biggest PvP server. 
If big battles happen, PvP zone, all game feels it. The game has a problem with PvP lag. Oh, okay. So, I mean, it's, it's more just like having so many people using so many abilities, probably all within a concentrated area. Okay. I honestly don't know which server I'm on. Is there a way to know whether it's a PvP or PvE server? Bitch, I'm not moving. Meh. See? Wait, is there a way to even check server without actually fully kicking yourself out of the game? One of two character slots used. That sucks. Okay, hold up. Yeah, we're gonna quit out of that real quick. Hold up. <laughs> all ser all servers have PvP. Oh, 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 oh. Like PvP areas, not actual like PvP PvP. Okay, for some reason I was thinking like ganking, basically. Okay, that's that's significantly lesser. I'm on Gladden. So I'm on No, yeah, no. Is Gladden a good server? Like, I, there's actually a lot more servers than I thought. There's Arkenstone. That's a VIP server. Uh, Arkenstone, Brandywine, Landreval, which is like the uh, RP server. Brick Hollow, Gladden. Okay, cool. Now, is that two characters for the entire account, or is that two characters per server? Arkin and Brandy's will be as my ventures. It's it's going okay. Like it's it's not bad. It's going pretty decent. I'm just trying to understand what the hell it is I'm looking at, basically. But it's very chill. Uh it's actually kind of making me sleepy. Um to be honest with you, it's making me sleepy, but then again, I also didn't sleep very well, so that's probably why. Stretch. Stretch. Okay. So my level 8 hobbits is, 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 is. Okay, that's cool. Uh, what's Monster Play? Reach level 10 with any character unlocked. Monster Play. Is that like a PvP thing? We get to play as a monster and stalk humans or something? Okay. Okay then, got it. Hours before just for logging in today. I'd rather I didn't right now. Good game. So let me talk to this dude that will probably take me to the next town over. While ignoring the hobbits. -s 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 -s. This game is very pretty. May not the most graphically Please updated things. Wait, what? The most updated stuff of all time, but I mean, the atmosphere of it is so good. Okay. Nosy Hobbits. Townsperson. Townsperson. We're just gonna hop-a-doodle. Bundle for needle hole. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Oh shit, that's like way north of here. Okay. Eh, that seems like a good idea. Let me just run all the way hell north. I would have assumed I was going to keep going east. I think the game looks great. I mean, yeah, the game looks fantastic. I mean, even with the HD upgrade, you can see that it's a little bit maybe just like the polygon count. It's a little bit on the dated side. Dad, 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 dad. It's a little bit on the dated side, I guess. But even so, just the overall layout is just gorgeous. The fact that you can see all the way, like the fact that there's no limit to draw distance, there doesn't seem to be, for better or for worse, they've kind of avoided the, the clever tricks that you see in games like uh, Final Fantasy XI and 
uh, wow and all that kind of stuff where they deliberately kind of narrow your field of vision in a particular area so that way uh, except for certain vistas so that way they can kind of help with the loading screen whoops so they can kind of help with the uh, uh, loading like the load impact on computers and stuff like that whereas this one you're just like okay you can see the entire zone if you want I mean to be fair WoW's draw distance at least up until midway through BFA was just absolute shit <laughs> Like, you could put the max draw distance and you would still only see at, like, max maybe a third of a zone or something like that. Like, it, it faded out to nothingness really, really quickly. They updated it, but even then, you can tell... I mean, considering that I can see, like, an entire zone from what this one guy was saying, that I can see the entire zone from one hill, considering how far away I can see and how many assets I can see... You know, the game is running surprisingly well for how far the draw distance can be. Whereas with WoW, when they updated the draw distance to see something closer to what I'm seeing right here, like, it just tanks your performance. I mean, absolutely destroys it. To the point where even a top-of-the-line computer really can't have it running at max, or really has no point having it at max because... It doesn't increase the draw distance functionally that much, but it just tanks your frame rate. I love walking through a bog in the middle of the night. This seems like fun. Seems like a lot of good times right here. This can't possibly cause any problems. No siree, Bob. So, I mean, I'll give it credit that, you know, for whatever else can be said about the rest of the game's programming, the fact that the world feels so open and vast and stuff like that. And you can see so far into the distance from a game that came out in like 2006, or excuse me, 2007, is very impressive. Like, it's really impressive that I'm able to... Hello? Oh, okay, you're a player. I don't care about you. It's very impressive. And frankly, in a weird way, it reminds... Oh, shit, I'm about to die. Can I, can I go? There we go. And quite frankly, it kind of reminds me of Morrowind. Which is a good thing, because I think Morrowind is still one of the best open world games to have ever been made. There's just something about the game that's so immersive. Even more so if you get uh, graphical mods and stuff like that, but it's just so immersive. Hey, Needlepoint. Hey, Postmaster. Postmaster, grant me a wish. Yay. Okay, cool. Griffo Boffin. How do you do? I know what you're thinking. That I stole the money, but I didn't. I was taking money on a shortcut across the bog to Overhill when the carpenters are working today and these ragged looking dwarves came running down to me from the north. They had axes and looked like they meant to use them, so I didn't mind so I don't mind saying I ran as fast as I could back to town, but I dropped the bag with the money along the way and turned my ankle too. I was just trying to come up with a way to tell the mayor the bad news when you showed up. I think those dwarves came out of the Russian boggies to hear about halfway to Overhill. I expect the bag is in their camp. Okay, so evil dwarves. Got it. Alrighty. I mean, to be fair, dwarves are larger than hobbits, so that kind of makes sense. Yeah, that's something I really wish um, Final Fantasy XIV, like a Realm Born, hadn't gone with, was if they had just gone with um, connected zones and they just kind of did what what 1.0 did or what WoW tends to do which is if it's going to be loading a new zone instead of it just being a clear drop-off point it kind of narrows into like a cavern or a valley or a doorway or something where you know as you're passing through this corridor or whatever it loads the new zone and unzones and unloads the last zone so that way it can help with the load i mean that's literally how final fantasy 1.0 did it i mean Say what you will about Final Fantasy 1.0's uh, maps, because they were super copy pasta. They were also fucking massive. Like, they were, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that, to kind of put it in perspective, and I mean, to be fair, I'm kind of talking out of my ass here, I suppose, but, you know, the, the 1.0 maps in Final Fantasy 14 were probably the size of, like, half the world map in here. Like, the the... The zone maps, the region maps, were absolutely massive. It's just they didn't get properly filled with anything. It was a cool concept, but they just didn't... They didn't have the time or the ability to see it through, basically. Um, I really wish Final Fantasy XIV had found a way to keep it all... Sort of... 
all zoned into one big experience. It really kind of takes me out of it a little bit. But to be fair, Final Fantasy XI has zone lines too, so it's it's not a huge deal. And I mean, especially like Modern WoW, they've basically given up on on having a seamless world at this point. They've basically given up on it. So like that game may as well have load zones between zones as well. So it's like whatever. Might I trouble you for some help? No, I am not doing that quest right now, good sir. You can F right off of that. Yep. I hope it's not a bother, but Mary, Gracious me, I'm glad to see you. You see my son? My cow Daffodil, she's gone missing. A dwarf came to my farm. Okay, so we got evil dwarves and shit. Doing dumb stuff. Got it. Shire is very small compared to other maps. Oh, I'm I'm sure. That's uh but what I'm saying is that Final Fantasy XIV's maps back in the olden days of yore were like obscenely huge. I mean to the point where I'm not surprised at all that one of the first things they did was actually cut it off into different into I mean on top of redoing it that they ended up cutting it off because those zones were just unreasonably large. There was no reason to have a single zone be that big. It's one of the reasons it ended up feeling so copy pasta because the zones were so big that they were just reusing the same terrain beats because you could tell the game was in like an alpha or pre-alpha state. They were basically just putting something out there like very bare bones. This is kind of the general idea, but they were told, hey, you want we want you to release this game on a brand new engine in under a year. So the the 1.0 Final Fantasy that people saw was literally made in 11 months, which is just like, I feel bad for the <coughs> 1.0's team because even though they had they were very proud and had a lot of hubris and stuff like that and all had a nagging tendency to make really stupid decisions because this is my vision and I'm right, yada, 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 yada. Um, they were also not given enough time at all. Like an MMO, best case scenario, I mean, as fast as you can possibly make it, is probably bare minimum like two to three years. I mean, this is one of the reasons why you know, WoW's whole thing of like, we're going to put out an expansion a year and it never happens. It never happens because it takes too freaking long to make something like that. And I mean, those are just expansions. That's just, you know, adding on to stuff that you already have. I mean, if you're talking about making something from scratch, then yeah, you're going to have to tack on at least an extra year or two on top of that. So the fact that they were as far as they were in 11 months is kind of, kind of impressive in a weird way. It just sucks that you know, their stuff was put in a pre-alpha state and then they essentially got fired because the higher-ups were like, well, why did you release a bad product? And, you know, this is, you know, unfortunately the nature of uh, corporations where they give you unrealistic standards and then they tell, and then those unrealistic standards can't be met and then they look at the subordinates and are like, well, why couldn't you meet those unrealistic standards? Well, why are you giving me fucking unrealistic standards, you moron? Because it's unrealistic. It's not possible. It's not going to happen. You're crazy pants. I'm going in the wrong direction, but you know what? Let's go for it. Fuck it. I want to go exploring. Damn it. We're going to go exploring. In the dead of night. And I'm going to die horribly, I'm sure. But it'll be funny. It'll be funny. That's pretty. The rush lock or the rush lock gate. Okie dokie. Wee. You. Or fountain and breed to purchase select cosmetic clothing items and sets. You compare this to more, and it really does give that vibe. Yeah, no, Morland's Morland's starting walk speed was atrociously bad, like so very bad. Thorin's Thorin's gate ah that's the area where the high the uh, elves start i'm guessing huh nogland gondamon okay this is amazing looking what is this this is more wind all day look at that We're going on a sightseeing tour. Sightsee? Sightseeing? Sightseeing tour. I'm trying to get something that can fully encapsulate just how cool this is.
sure, that works. Oh, I, I fully intend to follow the road. Thank you. By the way, please don't backseat me. I appreciate the help, but... If I want to walk off and get myself killed like a dumbass, it is my right, damn it. Oh, wow. Oh, this is Elf Town. Of course it's Elf Town. Why would the Elf starting area not be an Elf Town, dumbass? Okay. Okay, me. This is actually gorgeous, though. Wow. You know what would be amazing? This game in VR. This game would be phenomenal in VR. Holy shit. I would buy VR probably just to play something like this. Dude, being able to play a really immersive R RPG in a VR setting? Oh my god, are you kidding me? I think technically Skyrim is in there, but like also it's Skyrim. That is so cool looking. Yeah, right? Like at this point, I don't even care about the questing portion of it anymore because I've done that a million times. And it's like, whatever. It's cool. I just want to see what the world looks like. This is so cool looking. Yep. Dwyland. Dueland? I don't know, man. Words are hard. Now the question is, can I quest an elf land as a hobbit? Or is it one of those you have to be an elf to do this area? Like, this is the starter area sort of dealio. Wow. wonder how this looks during the day. Okay, that's cool. The river actually reflects the light of the the stars. That is cool. I want this game in VR. Straight up, I want this game in VR. I want to play this game in VR so I can play in first person. And just explore. And look at everything. So the quest combat is like... It's like, eh, it's whatever. The combat's not great, but I don't even care. It's it's pretty, damn it. Oop. Hold up, let me go back up this way. I'm gonna go to Elf Town. Dude. Wait, did the... Did the board of the mini-map change? Wow. I feel like Owen Wilson and I don't even care. Okay, this is actually cool. We go exploring, guys. Oh, don't fall off the cliff. God, don't fall off the cliff. Print screen. Don't even need the UI. We don't need... We don't need no UIs in these parts. Cool, I'm not on the edge. Screenshot. Let me make sure I'm actually getting the screenshots. Yay, 
am getting him. Okay, cool. Yay. This is so cool. Maybe I'm just a fan of very shiny, glowy things. It would not surprise me all that much. Also, the music here is super chill. I love the draw distance. I love that I can see all the way out into the distance like that. And that all of that is... Why, why am I hitting the map button like I can see anything? I love that all of that is basically explorable terrain. That feels so good, man. I know that sounds weird, but that really is a detail that I think gets often overlooked. Especially in games that are trying to be open world. Or trying to be an open world feeling such as an MMO. That it kind of has to be... It's got to feel like an open world, not just a set of boxes that look really cool, but it actually has to feel like a living, breathing world to it, you know what I mean? Boop. Oh, I can't wait to see this place in daytime. It's going to be so cool. Their houses are purchasable down by the water. You have to be level 15 plus. Oh, I definitely ain't going to be purchasing housing in here. I know that for a fact. Like, I don't have a house in real life. I'm not going to have a house in a video game. I already know that shit. Hello, purveyor of odd things. You seem pretty neat. Uh, floaty names turned off. Oh, it doesn't get rid of the little icons, though, huh? That's unfortunate. And bear in mind, this is without something like Reshade. Which is impressive in and of itself, because Reshade is typically the type of thing that adds this kind of pop. This is a great... Like, this game does an incredible job of using color. In a really meaningful way. It just... This area has so much pop. Oh, uh, uh, I'm dead. I'm alive! I have, I have no... <laughs> okay, you know what? Thank you, game, for not having fatal fall damage. I, I appreciate that, genuinely. Where am I? I fell off a dual wand. Okay, you know what? That's fair. This is so gorgeous, though. Like, I don't even care about the questing experience right now. I'll do that later off screen or something. I just want to explore. Hello, random person, because I have floaty names turned off. We're just going to be exploring like this for a while. I hope y'all are doing okay. It has to be very high. Okay, I didn't think that, you know, down the side of a cliff. Apparently that's not high enough. You know what? It's okay. Cool. Normally that will kill me in most other games. So you know what? I'll take it. I will totally be okay with it. We're going explorinating. Damn it. We're going true Morrowind style. Also, this is why I never actually beat Morrowind. Ever. Doesn't matter how many times I've played it. And I have played it numerous times. I have tried to beat it numerous times. And I never do. Because I always get distracted by all the different cool places I can go and see. And all the different cool places I can visit. And then... I try to remember what story I was trying to actually do. And I can't. And then I'm like, well... Guess we're starting over now. Don't fall off the cliff now. Boop. Well, that's what I mean, is that I've heard that it doesn't really take all that long to beat it. You gonna attack me? You gonna start something with me? No? Okay. But Morrowind, things like Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, I think stuff like this. This is, this is half the fun of a game like this, is just being able to explore it. Random person with a horse, hello. Hello. Goodbye. Screenshot. Damn it, games are things where you're supposed to make your own fun. You don't have to 
wait for the game to tell you when you should have fun with something. That's... I don't say that's necessarily your responsibility, but... Okay, that's cool looking. And the music is definitely helping with this feel of just... This is so gorgeous, man. I want this game in VR, Mom. Boop. And the sad thing is pictures will not be able to do this any justice. This is so cool looking. I'm gonna do some a little immersion stuffs, yeah? Welcome to Elf Town V2. The re elephanting. Hello, random person. It's a London. Sure, okay. It will always gonna be, it's probably gonna be in my mind Elf Town V2. Please take no offense, it's just the way my mind works. I don't always have the greatest capacity for names. Yep. Yep. Oh, shite. Oh, dude, they have their own constellations and shit? Cool. Hello, Max Helm. How are you doing today? Oh, cool. Do you see that? I don't know why that surprises me, but you can actually see the moon moving in the sky. So if I wanted to, I could actually watch the moon. I could watch the... Uh, the lunar cycle complete its rotation, McJiggery do. I'm not too bad, can't complain. I'm exploring Lord of the Rings Online because, quite frankly, at the moment the questing is kind of boring, but the game is so goddamn gorgeous that I just want to see what everything has to offer. Watertown! Aw. What? Cannonball! No, okay. Meanwhile, these elves are like, what is this weird hobbit doing? He just keeps diving into the water trying to get underneath, but I can't because, you know, I'm a hobbit. Speaking of which, how do I get out of the water? <laughs> well, about to find out. Never mind, found it. Like, is this hobbit on something? I mean, it's entirely possible. No, but it is entirely possible. Dude. Elf Town is amazing. Another constellation. Looks like a giant bow tie. That's pretty neat. Like, I don't even know what, which way I'm going. I don't even care. I'm just going wherever the road takes me at this point. Dude. Dude! Falathlorn. 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 Sure. I feel like I'm having a stroke saying it. Falathorn. Falathlorn. I mean, at this point, I'm also kind of killing time until I can get to, uh... Until the sunrise, because I want to see what this place looks like during the day. I'm sure it looks cool. Yeah. Boingy. 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 Um, uh, map. So I'm like, I'm actually off the map. What? Huh. 
When you're in first person mode, left click turns you. I mean, it looks like they can both do the same thing. Okay, that's fair. So where's Nogland? I want to go there. I won't die. This is survivable drop. You. Hello, random person. Goodbye, random person. Hobbit jumps. Hobbit's got the jumps, man. They wouldn't have an excellent career as either a basketball player or a volleyball player. This depends upon how much they like sand. Whoa, what is that? Yo! Okay. This game is fucking gorgeous. Holy hell. And I'm sure there are people like, lol, 2007 graphics, lol. I'm like, look, I'm not the kind of person that absolutely has to have, like, the highest polygon count to be impressed. I mean, it's cool, but composition makes up more than just sheer shiny value, if that makes sense. Somebody has a giant moose. Or an elk or something. They have a reindeer as a mount? I kind of want one. I have no idea what it's for, but I want one. A Lothlorn. Alright, I'm still going the right way. That's cool. But this does have... The more I run around, this more... This words... The more this really has, like, a... Very, uh... Very clear Morrowind vibe to it. The fact that it has... It feels... It feels lived in, you know? It feels alien, but it feels lived in. It feels natural. You know, it feels like a place that could theoretically actually exist, you know? And I keep hating... I don't really hate keeping to do this, but... You know, when you look at... Um, zones from the previous WoW expansions, the past maybe two or three expansions... They don't feel... I mean, they're gorgeous, but they don't feel lived in. They feel cramped. You know, they feel like... Just vessels for things to happen. They don't feel like a place that has room to breathe, if that makes sense. I mean, you don't, you want to be careful with how much dead space you have between areas because it's just sort of needless travel. But there are times where you kind of need that needless travel because it allows you to get a feel for how this, this world you're in actually, oh, sweet Jesus, hello. Hello, Thick Tusk. How are you doing today? How's it going, my dude? I'm just gonna keep to the- actually, you know what? Hey, buddy. We're just gonna- we're gonna smack thine bitch up, as it were. It's nice to know that I can theoretically play in first person now, if I wanted to. Is there another one next to me? Excuse me? Oh, there is. Hello. Hello, random thick boy. How's it going? Also, that sound effect is kind of- a little bit on the lewd side. I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing. You know, more power to you, but... But... Too far away. Cool. You... But anyway, there are times where you kind of need that quote-unquote needless space because it's what gives the world life. If it's literally just town after town after town after town, or, you know, hub after hub after hub with nothing in between, then it doesn't feel, they don't feel like hubs. They feel like, like it takes, at least for me, it takes me out of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, this game has a lot of charm to it. I can see why people have stuck with it, even after the, you know, various issues that I've heard of it having in terms of, you know, switching to, oh, are you kidding me? Come on, my dude. Look, man, I don't want to start a fight with you. I just want to enjoy the countryside. Why, why, why are you picking fights with me? It's a good thing I picked the tank class, I guess. Because I'm just, you know, they're trying to kill me and I'm just lolling all over their damage. I'm still trying to figure out what the loot all button is. I'm sure there's got to be a way for that where I have to click something other than that to loot everything. God damn it, look. Look, Mr. Wolfman. You gotta back up off my Cheerios, please. 
I just want to explore Elfland. You're not making my life easy. So, you need to just back up off me, yeah? You brought this upon yourself, I will have you know. Are you asshole? Okay, never mind. Elf ruins. Oh, hello. You know what? Maybe we're not gonna go to this area, because this area seems like a west town that's basically gonna smack the shit out of me, is what I'm getting out of this. You do that. Okay, we're just gonna turn around. And we're gonna run... Shit. Back to Duelon, I guess. Look, wolf. Or boar, or whatever the hell it is that's following me. Y'all need to back up off me. I didn't mean to wake you up. I'm sorry. I know it's dark out. You go back to sleep. I'll be out of your hair. Or your fur, whatever you call it. I don't even know at this point. Midnight. It's only midnight. Look, boar man. You need to back up off me. Oh, are these mobs? Oh, I didn't realize I could spot those. Okay. When did that happen? I know that says Gondamon. Gondamon or Gondamon. I keep thinking, looking at it uh, at a glance and thinking it says goddamn, and I'm just like, wow, okay, like, goddamn, man. Yeah, I've heard that um, Amazon is making a new Lord of the Rings game. Having said that, Amazon has said they wanted to make, like, five or six games by now, and I think they released one, and I think it was trash so far. It wasn't, it wasn't the one that was released and then taken down, like, two months later because of how bad it was. And the New World, which they tried to release, and then they had to push back for like a year and a half because people were like, Hey, he, he, I know I'm a Twitch streamer and everything, but this game is like actually hot trash. So, you know, I'll believe it when I see it is what I'm saying. Though quite frankly, at this point, it'd probably be better if they just bought this game out and poured a bunch of money into it. Or better, or otherwise made some kind of like made something that was like a true successor to this because I will say so far you know again I'm not I'm not a Lord of the Rings fan you know I don't have a hatred for it but I don't have a particular love for it but the fact that the world I'm seeing here has so much character and spirit and and life and like I can tell just by running around with very little knowledge of the story itself that there is a lot of history to this game. There's a lot of history to this world that I'm I'm now finding myself in. There's a lot of history and lore and character and just everything feels kind of lived in, which is kind of impressive because it's very easy. I can't imagine how easy it would be to screw up a game like this and manage to screw up that kind of feel. Yeah, some you know, some kind of trash battle royale game. Uh Man, you ever get on one of your lips where it starts to chap or something and you just feel the slight skin version of like a hangnail on one of your lips and it's just no matter what you do, it just won't go away. doesn't matter if you put, you know, whatever you call that stuff, put chapstick on it or whatever, it still goes away. You try to tug the thing off, it comes back because it's stupid. Bodies are dumb. I mean, I literally needed to survive, but it's dumb. Oh, this place is scary. Can I go back to Happy Elf Town? Because this seems like a place that basically got its shit rocked. And I'm suddenly way less enthused with taking a look at this place. Just, just, just saying. Apparently I dropped a couple of frames. That makes me sad. So we're going to keep going this way. And we're going to hope that I'm not going to get eaten alive. I should have grabbed the waypoint. Fuck. Oops. That's what I mean. Last night, the only thing I heard was that it was released... 
uh, I think it was like the Epic Game Store or whatever game store that Amazon works with. It was released onto that store and then pulled like a month later because of the fact that it did poor sales and it was, I think it was something to the fact that it was like, there may have been allegations that it was actually misrepresent, like the, uh, um, the advertising was actually misrepresenting the kind of game it was, like the stuff that they were showing, the, the in-game footage that they were showing was actually pre-rendered or something like that. I don't really remember, but I just remember that it got pulled because the game was just not in a good state. Purple named mobs will hurt. Got it. Purple equals bad. Okay. Thank you for letting me know, because I definitely would have forgotten, but I probably would have seen uh, the dent to my health and probably run away screaming. Gundamon! Hey, Elfland! Why did you stop being so pretty? This is not how your sister looked. So we got Gollum up in this shit, and that's a wolf. Hello, Mr. Wolf. You know, you don't need to do this, Grey Wolf, dude. I'm just saying. You are welcome to leave me the F alone. And I would be happy to be left alone. I just want to explorinate, that's all. I'm not trying to cause you troubles. I'm just trying to see the world, that's all. Also, big ups to the fact that you can actually subtly see <laughs> subtly see the change in terrain such that you're starting to see snowfall as you're getting closer to uh, Iceland over here. You're also seeing a change in uh, foliage and stuff like that. You're starting to see a lot of pine trees and less of the deciduous variety. Uh, maybe they are. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just quite literally running around because it's fun. And again, that's not me trying to shit on what I've been playing on. It's just like, okay, this, the quest design is from, you know, the olden days of yore. So it's not exactly interesting to watch and it's not super interesting to do. But the world looks amazing. So like, fuck it. Let's go. Let's see what we got. And this is very ambient. I like it. I don't really know where I'm going, but I can tell that shit is on the way to getting dangerous. Arid Luin. Thorin's Hall. Wait, isn't that a place that, uh... No, no, no. What's the place in the two towers that they had to guard? It's giving you nostalgia? No, that's that's fair. I appreciate you hanging around. I am a total nublet when it comes to all of this stuff. I just find it fascinating. Also, the day-night cycles here last a good, like, hour or two, don't they? Helm's Deep. Helm's Deep. Okay, I, I couldn't remember what it was called. Again, like I said, I'm not... I'm not a, a Lord of the Rings, like, fan. I watched the movies once, thought they were good. They were okay. Again, the, the Return of the King ending was way longer than it had any right to be. I get it was an epilogue, but also, like, pacing and cutting, like, the editing of it was just, it felt... Oh, my God. Um, that probably more evidence that I'm not really a huge Lord of the Rings fan, probably. But, you know, it was okay. It didn't seem like it was bad or anything like that. But I'm not... It didn't really suck me into the world, as it were. Which again is not the game, which again is not the movie's fault or the the book's fault or anything. It's just really wasn't I wasn't really feeling it, you know? I imagine that if anything were to make me feel the Lord of the Rings genre, or the Lord of the Rings mythos or what have you, would probably be something like this, because I prefer video games, generally speaking, over pretty much anything else. Because they have such a unique form of storytelling that when people execute it correctly or execute it well perhaps i guess there's not really a quote-unquote correct way to do it but when it's executed well it provides a storytelling experience that no other medium can match almost purely because it's an interactive experience so by virtue of controlling the character you kind of have to feel more immersed into what's going on of course and then you have the people who speed run it by you know 
uh, frame perfect, shooting their balls off with a freaking rocket launcher and breaking their legs in half, which somehow glitches the game into giving them like 350% speed or something. You know, then there's that. But generally speaking, well-crafted games have a level of immersiveness that nothing else can really match. IMO. Uh... You're only level seven. Okay, that's not bad. This is so immersive. I want this in VR so bad. You don't even understand. Hang on a sec. Oh no, 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 no. You back up off me, Fox. Molder, back up off me. Hang on, I really gotta do something. Like, it's actually driving me insane right now. Did this always smell like bubblegum? Fruit smoothies, okay. Never paid attention. I mean, I've never really gotten into the habit of sniffing chapstick, ever. But here we are. It, it, okay. And once again, because I have taken the headphones off for like 0.2 seconds, now we're going to go back into this thing where it's like my hair will surgically attach itself every spare inch of whatever and turn my entire head into a Brillo pad. It's great. I'm tempted to go to Sarnor, but that seems like Scary Town, USA. So we're probably going to go this way. Because Thorm's Gate can't possibly be terrifying, right? Don't look at me. Something I'm really liking so far, though, and I say this in all sincerity because this is not something I have seen in all of my experiences with MMOs. I'm looking at you, wow, you bastard. Is that what I've seen in the uh, world chat so far has been like n literally nothing but helpful people. It's literally nothing but people either actually asking for a group or people are like, hey, by the way, don't forget to do this. Hey, guys, by the way, hey, there's this new event happening. Hey, by the way, here's your Lotro points. It's a, like, it's actually people like, being decent human beings. And I don't, I don't know how to handle this because I'm used to playing in WoW where everybody is a douchebag and a troll, you know? And that's honestly one of the reasons that I've just kind of fallen out of WoW recently, I mean, because like WoW's community has never been fantastic. You know, Blizzard's games have always courted the 13 year old meme lord player base sort of thing, which admittedly I was part of. I mean, maybe not, not super meme lord, but I mean like it didn't bother me as much when I was like 16 as it does now, but it's always courted a rather fiercely competitive and not exactly super mature player base. Um, it's always been a very... Like, I don't want to use the word toxic, but that's the only word I can think of where it's just very... It's, it's not very newbie friendly. It's very insular. It's very sort of like... You know, very clickish, Clickish? Whatever. You know, and there's just trolling and just ass hattery is very much rampant. It could also be like a US EU thing. I don't know how it is on like Asian servers or what have you, but at least for NA speaking, like it's usually a troll fest in a lot of cases. So coming to a game like this or, you know, even like Final Fantasy 14 or Guild Wars 2 and generally seeing people who are like not being total assholes is really refreshing because it's nice to not get shat on. Because, like, I'm new or something. Does that make some? I'm, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they're, they're assholes. Like, they're assholes in every game. They're elitists in every game. They're the window-looking knuckle-draggers and the gatekeepers and, you know, the neckbeards and the robots that have to math everything out. And if you're not doing everything in the absolutely most optimal way, then you're trash because you're making my experience worse, etc., etc. 
you know, I mean, that's just human nature. That's, that's, you can't do anything about, hello. Hello, Mr. Screenshot, nice to meet you. Okay, this music, very, very Dwarven-esque. I like it. Having said that, it's, it's, it seems to be way more prevalent in WoW versus other games. And maybe that's just the nature of just how popular the game is, how many people it attracts. So you get the lowest common denominator and you get just the loudest voices, which is just the sheer volume of just nasty voices kind of overpowers all of the decent people. And there are decent people who play a while. There are plenty of them. You know, millions of them, I'd, had, I'd hazard to say. But, uh, it's nice to not... It's nice to look, to glance down at the world chat. Let me just put... It's like, it's nice to glance down at the world chat and not see political arguing or actual shit posting or people spamming, spamming like Blessed Blade, Thunder, Fury... Uh, Blessed Blade of the Wind Speaker. Wind Speaker? Oh my god. I, I need to revoke my WoW card, like Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Wind Seeker spam, or anal insert thing here. Like, it's it's nice to not constantly see it. Every once in a while, okay, fine, it happens. You know, school's gotta end at some point, but, you know, to not constantly see it on... It's, it's nice, is what I'm trying to say here. What's funny is that, yeah, like, Nostalgus' community actually wasn't, was actually really good. You know, you occasionally got the shit posts and everything, but I mean, generally speaking, it seemed like the private, at least, I, don't, I mean, to be fair, the private community server was also like a dumpster fire of its own making in an entirely different accord, because I actually did do WoW private servers for a solid couple of years, and, and, that, and that community was its own private brand of just, like, circle jerking hell, like, Jesus Christ. But... Generally speaking, the private community server also kind of policed itself in a certain way that Blizzard retail servers didn't, if that makes sense. Um, such that, you know, because it was like their private servers are legal servers, if you're being a douche canoe on trade chat and the GM sees it and they don't like it, it's like, you're just gone. <laughs> you know, there is no appealing, there is no $15 a month, they're just like, yeah, you're out, bye-bye. You know, and there is there is a certain... Oh, that's pretty cool. Where am I? Where is this? I have no idea where I'm at. Thorin's Hall. The hell is this? It's amazing and I love it. Oh, am I in the Dwarf City? Am I in Dwarf Town? And that's actually one of the reasons I play MMOs the way that I do right now is because unfortunately just... I've, I've spent so much time... So many literal actual years of my life. Is this water? No, this is just 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 that shiny. Guess what? Welcome to the screenshot film. Welcome to screenshot town. I like shiny things. That's not that's not a screenshot button. That's the screenshot button. But I've I've dedicated literal years of my life to both Final Fantasy XI and WoW, and to a lesser extent Rift. Um, getting involved in the end game. Getting involved in. Essentially, for the lack of a better term, guild drama, you know, and it's just like there's a point I'm like I got I ain't got time for that. Like if I want if I want drama with other people, I'll go to my job, you know, I'll go to work. At least there I'm getting paid with real money. It's one of these like I don't I just don't have it in me to get involved in basically the the local politics, so to speak. So usually I basically just kind of keep to myself. If I can do groups with people, cool. You know, if I can hop in and join a group, cool. But it's sort of like, well, you can get a guild to do that. No. Like, I, I I, don't want to. Like, I don't want to get a static of people and, and play the, like, that's just, it feels exhausting to me in a way that I can't even begin to fathom. Where I'm like, no. And I mean, honestly, and for me, half the fun of grouping was pugging. And I know that makes me sound like a freak, because I am. But half of the fun when it came to grouping was pugging. Was working with people I didn't know and, and learning their... And kind of learning to read their mannerisms, their strengths, their weaknesses. What were they good with? What were they, you know, were they a good, were they a good tank? Were they a shit tank? Were they, was the healer constantly running out of mana? Was the mage sheeping? And I'm dating myself by saying, yes, the mage was actually CCing, you know, and just trying to use my toolkit for whatever class I was playing 
and use my toolkit to best aid the group. It was a challenge to me, like, it, and not to sound like an asshole, but I didn't really care about the other players. If they were cool, awesome. But it was more, I did that stuff as a personal challenge. I wanted to see if my ability to play my class was enough to save the group from a wipe when shit started hitting the fan. You know what I mean? I also have no idea where I'm going, but I'm in Dwarf Town now. Wait, is there a waystone in here? Can I see a waypoint on the map? This music is surprisingly happy. Is there a waypoint in here? Honestly, I know I'm a hobbit, but I feel a lot more like a dwarf. It's outside? Okay, cool. Because my understanding is you can get a waypoint, and then once you discover the waypoint, once you basically lick the waypoint or whatever it is that you need to fucking do with it, uh, you have the ability to teleport to any of these places after that point, correct? Mr. Waypoint, where did you go? I need to lick you so I can go home. Hello, Waypoint. Where for out thou, Waypoint? Or Waystone, or whatever the hell it's called. Ow. Lick a Waypoint. Look, I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is that you can reach a Waypoint and then it's like you can use that. It's basically like a home point location. Um, and from what I'm reading what he's saying there, it's basically like a OG home point location in Final Fantasy XI, where you say, okay, this is my home point, this is like my hearthstone or whatever. This is where I go to, basically. So I don't need to actually click the waystone to do anything. It's basically just like a, hey, if I want to set this as my home point, I do it. I don't know, but they're saying like, hey, I mean, I'm thinking in terms of like Final Fantasy XI now and Final Fantasy XIV, where it's like, well, you have to attune to the, you have to attune to the crystal. You have to attune to the point. I'm like, do you have to lick it? Like, what is it that you have to do to attune yourself to this thing? So just lick the waypoint, you know? I mean, can you think of a scenario in which you licked something in which the scenario was not ultimately, you know, I wanted to say indecent. That's not the word, but I suppose it could be. But also, you know... Intimate, shall we say. This is freaking gorgeous, and I love it. Something is fighting. Is something fighting me? No? Okay, cool. This is definitely Dwarven Town. Wonder what a waypoint tastes like? Probably magic and burning, if I were to hazard a guess. I mean, I imagine everything tastes like burning if you lick enough of it. You ever lick a battery? I imagine it's probably like that. And don't tell me you haven't licked a battery before. There is a correct answer to that question. If you have not licked a battery, then I question the life that you have lived good, sir. I don't know a person on... well, okay. Admittedly, I haven't asked, like, everyone, because that would be a really weird question. Just walk up to somebody you've worked with, like, like, hey, you ever licked batteries before? Um, but, you know, you ever lick a 9-volt? You know, that's sort of like, Zzz. oh, that's weird. Zzz. And you just keep doing it for, like, five minutes because it's so interesting you can't help but just be like, hey, Sneak, can we do more of that? You know. And then, and then what's funny is that it actually does have a flavor to it. You know, it, it, it literally tastes like burning. Like, I love, I mean, I love that joke and I love that meme, but that, that actually does have a basis in real life because licking a 9-volt does, in fact, taste like burning. And it's probably your taste buds being electrified. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. So I have... I have definitely gone somewhere. I think I've spent like the last hour and a half just running around and just exploring these zones. Which, by the way, these zones are friggin' huge, man. Like, I mean, think about it. I've spent an hour and a half running on... Yeah, it's gotta be like an hour, an hour and a half running on foot. But, uh, even with that hour and a half running on foot, like... What am I trying to say here? Getting distracted by shiny objects spent like an hour into an hour and a half running on foot and I've literally gone through like a zone and a half. These zones are huge. 
huge, I tell ya. Now entering Thorin's Gate. I have no idea where I'm going, but I'll do it. Let's go! Odd that there's this little, like, trail of whatever right here. It almost looks like an outline that somebody squiggled in the snow. Oh, that's cool! The branches moved. I know that's a weird detail. I love shit like that. The others aren't doing that. Of course they aren't. Well, ball sacks. Oh, I guess this one is considered foliage and the other ones aren't? I mean, alright. Where am I going? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. This place is looking like it had a real bad day. I'm assuming this is the intro where it starts off beautiful and then it gets blown up and some shit. Oh, I can't go through there, can I? Aww. Let me through, bitch! Let me through! I'm a hobbit, look at this! I can f You see this shit? I can walk directly through these beams. Don't tell me I can't do it. Damn it. Yes, I can simply walk into Mordor. It also doesn't matter I'm on the opposite side of the world. Don't judge me. Yep. Face full of snow. You can probably buy everything. and bought a lifetime sub. Yeah, no, that's... That's pretty legit. I did not buy a lifetime sub to Rift because it wasn't available, but I did buy multiple 12-month subs. And the sad thing is, I wasn't even trying to buy that many 12-month subs because every time I saw the charge, it was like, wait, what the hell is this? It was like a week later and I was like, oh shit, I have to cancel that. And then I would forget, get distracted by something, and then completely forget about it until the charge came up again. On the plus side, it meant that I had, yeah, like, I don't know, I had like tens of thousands of the freaking whatever points uh, or whatever coins or whatever the shit that they used in Rift then and or now. So I think at that, uh, on that game, it's like, I think I'm like the top tier level of partner or closest or like second from the top of level tier, like not actual like individual people, but in terms of tiers, I'm like the top tier, second to top tier, just because I left the freaking sub running for like four or five years back when I was working as salary and actually making like 60 grand a year. So spending a hundred dollars, an extra hundred dollars something a year was not bank breaking I would notice it now but oh that sucks they can do that though indeed hooray for expendable income like it sucks that I don't have it anymore but hooray yeah this place has definitely had a bad day all right I imagine this place was beautiful in the intro, before it got nuked out of existence or whatever the fuck happened here. Mm. Wow, that's kind of fucked up. They're like, well, it sucks to be you. No more lifetime sub. Eh. Like that, that kind of blows. You know what's weird? I kind of feel like... Right now, I'm wandering through a WoW instance where I'm not, like, parts of a WoW instance I'm not supposed to be in. Does that make sense? Where it's like, it feels like it's pretty clear that people really aren't supposed to be here now, mainly because it's completely deserted. And it's one of those, like, yeah... There's supposed to be, like, an invisible wall and I had to, like, clip through some shit to even get here. How the fuck do I get out of this place? There we go. I broke a leg, but you know what? It's worth it. Let you do what you want so long as you're VIP these days. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, that's what, um, that's what Zash was telling me, was that this is like the elf starting area. So I'm assuming that there's probably a battle with orcs or something. They nuke the place and it's pretty. This is a really dark area, though. My God. Like, look at that. I'm trying to get a good angle for just how... What am I trying to say? Eh, nose itch. For the level of just oppressive darkness this is. This isn't your average everyday darkness. 
This is advanced darkness. And you know what? Kudos. In all sincerity, like, kudos to Turbine or Standing Stones or whoever the fuck actually made this for actually being okay with making things dark at night. I know that may sound silly, but I love that fact. Like, again, this seems to be a game that's really good with playing with color because it's dark. Like, it should look dark. It should look imposing. Like, this place looks fucking terrifying. This, this juxtaposition of the white snow reflecting, you know, whatever moon may be there being super bright juxtaposed against, juxtaposed against the fact that everything is just pitch fucking black along with the music, like, this place feels more imposing than most places in WoW. Just straight up. Like, look how terrifying this is. Would you want to be caught in a place like this? I know I fucking wouldn't. That's not a print screen. Turbine. Yeah, Turbine and Codesmasters. Like, I mean, kudos to them for crafting a world that feels like a world. You know, they're, like I said, they've been very good so far at using colors and, and scope and shape to really make the world feel like something, you know? It's something that Final Fantasy pisses me off with as well, the fact that they have a day-night cycle, and the nighttime is gorgeous, but it's too freaking bright because you can still see absolutely everything. It's basically what it is during daytime. It's just a nighttime skybox and everything's, like, tinted blue and purple, you know? And it's like, well, that's... Like, I want it to be dark. Like, um, Elder Scrolls Online is really good for that, is having... Um, Okay, for a second I thought there was something weird going on on the uh, OBS screen, but it seems to be okay. You know, ESO does a really good job of that too, making dark areas dark. Is it sometimes difficult to see? Yes, but that's kind of the point. Like, dark areas are supposed to be kind of difficult to see. It's supposed to be imposing. Like, look at this. This is pitch black out there right now. Like, look at that. This is so cool looking because it's pitch black. And I'm assuming this is probably... Uh... What's up? What's up, horse man? Yeah, kinda. It's like wearing sunglasses, where it, it feels... What does it look like on this side? Oh, shit. Okay, that's cool. The water actually, cr like, the ice actually cracks when you walk on it. That's actually cool and kind of horrifying. You know, if I was talking shit before about the sound design in this game, let me officially retract that. Because the sound effect of walking on this this ice right here is, especially at night like this, is genuinely creepy. I mean, genuinely is like freaking me the fuck out because it's almost pitch black out. I can't really see what the hell is going on and what I'm doing. And I'm hearing crinkling underneath me as I'm going. And creepy crinkling nonetheless. Don't mess with me on Cave Claw, please. Thank you. Look, Gollum, you need to back up off my Cheerios, please. Die. I would very much prefer that not to be the case. Okay, seriously now, bud? That's what I thought. Fatal fall damage? No, just a broken leg. Wonderful. Eh, just rub a little water on it, it'll be fine. It'll be okay. Yeah, so you just put a little ice on it, it'll be fine. The cracking ice is definitely not ha helping with that. 
Oh yeah, no, I don't fucked up my leg pretty bad. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Four dawn. It's still four dawn. That is unfortunate. Holy shit, it's almost seven o'clock. Jesus Christ. Okay. It's amazing how much time flies. I was gonna when you're having fun. And again, I'm not trying to shit on Lord of the Rings, but the the questing is is not that enjoyable. It's not bad. But it is very old school and just, like, it harkens back to, like, 2005. And, I mean, granted, it's because it came out in 2007, but it very much, at least the starter quest, very much harkened back to that, like, 2006, 2007 era where it's grab one quest, run over, do it, run back, turn it in, grab another quest, go to the same place, kill another set of mobs, run back. And it's like, like, I, I'm pretty sure when it comes to, okay, that's pretty cool looking. When it comes to stuff like that, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to have something running on the side. So I can kind of watch it. I can kind of watch something on the side as I do it. Because I'm pretty sure that my brain just probably won't be able to handle that after a while. I mean, this is cool, but I really want a shot of the mountains as it starts to get light out. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Like, I mean, the main quest line doesn't seem bad at all. And that's, I guess, what I'm... Okay, that's really cool looking. That's neat. But, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like a bad quest. It's just the actual design of do one thing, run off, run back, do one thing, run off, run back, do one thing, run off, one ba run back. I'm just like, man, you know, I'm sure the storyline is like the story is fantastic, but the actual guts of it, like, Jesus, to be fair, I mean, like, let's be real. Most modern MMOs don't really do that much of a better job because... Even Final Fantasy XIV with its updated storyline and everything, even though it has a good story to it, I think, it has a really fantastic story to it, um, is essentially just fetch quests for days, at least up until level 50. Yeah, exactly. You only can find or kill 10 things before it's just like, fuck everything. So it's sunrise now. I don't know why I'm so excited to see Sunrise in a video game. Like, it's just a video game. Why does it matter? Why? Because it's fucking cool, that's why. I mean, look at this. Look at this mountainous landscape. And like... I'm trying to find a good vantage point. And I want to do it before it gets too light out. You're starting to see the bits and pieces of everything. I love the fact that you can see this sun rising over the distance. I just wish that I could find a way to do it without... You know what's weird? And I know this makes me sound like a shill for somebody somewhere. But I've really yet to come across an MMO where I've found... Like, admittedly, I don't haven't tried playing, like, the worst of all time. But even the, the shittier MMOs, I seem to find... There's something redeemable about it. There's something that could be decent. You know, there's a decent concept. There's some decent art, decent music. You know, like even freaking Algonon, which was one of the worst games I've ever played. You know, there was a cool concepts in there. You know what I mean? And the art style wasn't terrible. Was it a rip off of WoW pretty much in every possible capacity? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. 1000%. But... There was stuff that was decent in there, you know, there was decent ideas in there, it was just not very good, but there was something decent and semi-redeemable about it, you know. Warhammer had really fun PvP, even though the programming was, you know, spaghetti-coded at its finest. You know, I really enjoyed Warhammer's PvP, and I don't really like PvP much as a general rule. Um, Rift had some of the mo one of the most amazing like, uh, talent and class systems I've ever seen. I loved it. And to, to this day, it's still the only game aside from WoW where I not only hit level cap, I actively participated in Endgame for any measure of time. You know, Final Fantasy XI sucked my soul out for two years, but I never hit Endgame because I got distracted by shiny objects. Um, you know, every MMO I've played has had something cool. Like, the art style in this game, even if the questing, the mechanics itself is just kind of, like, blah. The actual, like, the world itself is phenomenal. 
Like, I kind of want to learn more about Lord of the Rings just because this world is so cool looking. Um, you know, like DCUO had great combat system, had great um, character creation system, you know, had a really cool story. If you're into that kind of stuff, I mean, honestly, despite the fact that I love Batman, I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge comic book nerd. I just like Batman sort of deal. Um, I mean, the combat is way more dated now than it was when I first played it. Like, I don't know if it was just something to do with my connection. There was like this weird half second lag between me hitting a button and then that button executing, especially when it came to like the generic combats, like left click, right click, whatever. There was a strange little bit of, it was either like lag or there was some sort of like animation locking where the animation had to start, the animation had to go through before you could tell the next command to go through. So there was, it felt like there was a little bit of a disconnect between the buttons you were pressing and what was actually happening. But even so, you know, as weird as it felt, it still has interesting combat, you know? Uh, Guild Wars 2 has beautiful world, has, you know, uh, really interesting classes, has a really interesting lore. Uh, from my understanding, it's very casual friendly. He has so, is gorgeous, lots of lore. Um, really unique sort of like class weapon system where you can really kind of like make your own class sort of as it were uh final fantasy 14 fantastic story fantastic visuals um basically does the wow formula better than wow at this point wow like you know as much as i shit on it the core of the game is fantastic i love that game and i want to play it like i want to play wow i've literally played the game on and off for 15 plus years almost 16 years it's just my issues one i've pretty much done everything i wanted to do in the game all the major goals i wanted to do i've done and two it's just it's like the developers unfortunately have taken a really core a really cool core concept you know the gameplay the uh, the the guts of the game the uh, the abilities you know the, the ui is very snappy the uh, combat is very responsive you hit a button and it activates uh there is no animation locking which doesn't which sometimes make you know makes the visuals look kind of weird it makes the combat sometimes <coughs> perhaps feel a little bit floatier than something like final fantasy 14 or an eastern mmo or whatever um but it makes it very snappy and very responsive. Um, the art and sound design, if it's even if it's not necessarily your cup of tea, you can tell it has very high production value. Uh, you know, and WoW has insane amounts of lore. It has a lot of lore to it. It's just they take these really core, cool, fun concepts and they throw it into this like AI algorithm meat grinder where it's like you can have fun, but it has to be this way. It has to be fun this way. It has to be fun the way we tell you it's fun. If you want to grind this thing, well, you can do it like next, you can do it Tuesday of next week because that's when we have that that quest up. And you're just like, but, but why? Like, why Why can't I just, like, it, it was one thing when it was something relating to groups, but if I just wanted to do solo content, why do I have to wait for a quest to be up to make grinding for a reputation optimal? And yeah, I know, cool, like, that's, that's fantastic. Like, I don't have to wait for an emissary or a calling or whatever. I can just grind those quests every single day. I can grind those dailies and world quests and whatever every single day. But the way about, the way the brain works, and this is one of the reasons I don't, it, it pisses me off because it's basically like emissaries and callings and all of that kind of stuff is essentially like running an in-game sale on something you know 50 percent off today only today and tomorrow only get it before you miss out like it creates this the fear of missing out it creates this idea where it's like if i'm not doing it now well i'm not being optimal i'm missing out on something so therefore i have to play it and like quite frankly well fuck that you know i understand if it's going to be like you know once every two months or once every three months or there's something like once every year or something where there is a Oh, okay. All right, that was just neighbors doing something outside. Okay, I thought for a second somebody was calling for me outside or something. Um, but uh, it's one thing that if there's like a limited time event in the span of a year or what have you, but I mean, it's to have like something pop up like once every other week. It's like, oh, you got to do this. Oh, that because it, it, it incentivizes you to like, I have to keep playing in order to do this. And it's a really insidious way of getting people to continue to play your game. Well, it's only available here. It's to drip feed people 
like a fucking cocaine addict where you're just drip feeding them just enough so that way they can hang on, they can keep themselves busy. Well, you know, my my uh, my emissary for Dreamweavers or whatever isn't up and it's not going to be up for like another, you know, week or so or whatever. So I guess I'll just do the dailies every day and then when I come in, that'll get an extra like 1500 reputation. That'll be cool. Like it's not, it's insidious because it... it it incentivizes you to just kind of keep suffering until you get the thing that you want. And it's it's like, there's psychologically, it's not a great way to keep people playing because it's tricking them into playing for longer versus just letting the player decide, decide how much they want to do something. You know, it's time gating in a really subtle and insidious way and I don't like it, basically, is what pisses me off about it. I'm sorry that I went on the same, I'm sorry that I went on a rant about WoW, but it, like it made me realize last night when I was watching some WoW content and I'm like, why does this bug me so much? And I realized I'm like, oh, because it's a fucking sale. It's a sale on reputations, like 50% off for the next two days, get it before you miss out. And I'm like, well, if I wanted to do that, I would just go shopping. Like it's, it's, I don't want to get pitched to. I don't want to get sold. Like, let me just play the game the way that I want to play. Why are you telling me that I can't? You know, let me make the choices that I want to make. This is your meaningful choice. This one thing that we're telling you to do, this is the this is your meaningful choice for the expansion. Everything else doesn't really matter. This is the one thing we want for you to matter. And ironically enough, if you look at all the data, it's like <laughs> it's like the least meaningful choice of the lot because everybody is quite literally just going, okay, which one is the best? Cool, I'm picking that one. And there's just there's no choice involved. It's not even a choice because people are just going to pick the best one and kind of go with it. Or they're going to either they're going to pick the one that's statistically the best, or they're going to pick the one that they like the most aesthetically. It's not really much of a choice. You know, picking your race when you first start the game is a meaningful choice for people. But it's not the game saying, well, this is your meaningful choice. Do you want the most damage? Like, you know, it's... I'm ranting. Oh, no, that actually is a line. That is actually a line in, in the snow. That's really weird that that's there. Okay. But hey, look, it's sunrise out now. Yay. Baller. Why am I oh, trying to open the map? Because obviously I can't see it. So that was a nice, like, 15-minute rant. But no, Classic is good for that exact reason. Like, there's... When you try to design everything to be fun, like optimal fun, like, you know, you do A to B to C to D and you you design like this really tightly designed way to quote unquote have fun. Sometimes it ends up being not fun because you optimize the fun out of it. Sometimes the fun is in the mess. Sometimes the jank is what creates a sense of organic joy. Sometimes things being a little bit jank is what lets the player actually play the game. It presents them a challenge that they need to, to challenge, they need to overcome, something they need to think about, something that, a meaningful choice that they need to solve. Like, hey, feral druids aren't really good as in raids, but you really like them, so what are you gonna do? That's a meaningful choice to somebody. What are you going to do? Sometimes, you know, some things are super jank, but you have to make choices on, oh, that's pretty cool. Hold up. Pictures! You have to present those, like, you have to make choices on how you're going to overcome those challenges. Are they intended that way? Are they designed that way? Not specifically. Is it a shortcoming in the developer? Yeah, essentially. But sometimes, you know, development shortcomings can, in and of themselves, present their own kind of fun. It's not necessarily, design flaws aren't always bad for a game. You can't create a perfect game because then it's soulless. You know what I mean? I don't know. I go on rants a lot sometimes, so for those of you who are new here, sorry, I rant a lot. And I tend to rant about WoW a lot because, I don't know, I feel like a jilted ex-lover or something, if that makes sense. I don't know, I played the game for 15 years, and I love the game, and I want to continue to play the game, but they just... They make dumbass decisions that I don't agree with, so here I am playing other things because it's fun. I mean, think about it, I've spent like the last two hours now, quite literally just running around, taking pictures and just exploring this place I've never been to before. And it's fun. I've enjoyed myself. I've had a hell of a time doing this. You know, I didn't have to 
the game didn't have to tell me to do this. The game didn't have to lock me behind something and say, well, no, 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 no. You can't access this until you do these three quests. <coughs> well, you get through here. You know, the way the game typically does that, or the way games typically do that, is they put a bunch of high-level mobs there that destroy you if you go outside your proverbial lane. You know, which is typically how games do it. They'll put, if they don't want you somewhere, they'll find a way to make sure you don't go there. But like, you know, just let the freaking players play the game the way they want to play. Let players have some fun. It's just every once in a while, let players enjoy themselves, damn it. And now my throat is sore from talking too much. Damn it. <coughs> Pretty, though. There's a gorgeous sunlight, though. I want to go back to Elf Town before I get off for the night, because I actually have been going for another two and a half hours, and that's not factoring into, like, 25 or 30 minutes. Look. There, dude. Oh, thank you, random player. Thank you, random player, for saving me from what was assuredly a certain death. But I'm gonna go back to Elf Town and see what it looks like during daytime. And see, that's the thing. I mean, yes, there's technically no profit in letting you have your own fun, but more people would be subscribed. More people would be inclined to, like, if you don't, quote-unquote, force people, you know, if you don't coerce people or otherwise browbeat people or guilt them into spending more money than they want, then they tend to spend more money over a period of time. Whereas, in most cases... If you're like, well, you have to do this now, they'll do it begrudgingly. But eventually that goodwill, I know you were saying that as a troll, but eventually the uh, the goodwill dries up and then people basically get fed up and leave. And sure, you can extort as much money out of them as you can, and they're going to be the lifers who spend that much money willingly because they're blind and they think like this is good game design because they've got major sunk cost fallacy going on. Or maybe they just have bad taste. I don't really know. But, you know... Typically, having a fairer policy of sorts in which just let just let players have fun. That's how games stay popular. You know, is just let players friggin' have fun. There's still people who play Half-Life 2. There's still people who play Halo. You know, people who play Halo 3. Because it's, you know, it's a very well-designed game, but there's a funness to it that's not, you know, that kind of got, I mean, honestly kind of got washed down. Oh my god. Fuck it. We're gonna go, we're gonna go out in style. Yep. The one time I thought landing in the water would help me, and it didn't. You know what? I think I'm gonna call it. We're gonna go back a little delving oh no that's right there's a there's a um title for not dying before level 20 isn't there oh oh well either way that was a nice exploration session this game is gorgeous and now i've kind of convinced myself to play more if for nothing else than to actually see more zones at the level in which they were intended, and maybe actually spend a little bit more time um, getting into the, the quest lore and all that good stuff while watching something else in the background because the actual combat is kind of mind-numbing. Um, oh, that's a 60-minute 60, that's a 60 minute cooldown. That's about fair. Um, but I appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, wait until you get level 80 and get war steeds. Like, trying to ride a horse with reverse controls on ice. Oh, that sounds like fun. That sounds awful. Uh, but I appreciate you guys sticking around, um, letting me go through and just kind of putz around and rant about different various topics and all that good stuff. Uh, this is a beautiful game. I fully intend to play this more. I don't know when. Uh, yeah, she says 
for the zillionth time. But um, this is a fun game. I would recommend it. You know, the combat is not the greatest, but for the exploration itself, I think it's totally worth it. Uh, the game is super chill. It's very chill, very relaxing. Um, so if you're looking for something to just kind of sit back, relax, and play on one screen and just kind of vibe with the zone or vibe with the, the aesthetics and everything, this is totally a game for you. Um, but I'm going to roll out for now. And uh, I will see y'all next time. Hopefully, I'm trying to do every Friday. The last couple of weeks didn't happen because just real life shit got in the way. Uh, I bought a new computer. Yeah, boy. It's a 3070 and a 5900X. Don't mind the mess boxes over there. Uh, oh, sweet Jesus. What have I done? What have I done? This is why, this is why I can't have nice things. Is this... Oh, uh, Lord... Sweet baby Jeebus. Well, you know what? That's going to be good enough. Fucking good enough. I don't even care. Ow. I just punched myself in the head. That's fine. Um, but thank you all for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I will see you all next time. Peace out. <laughs>